Fenerbahce Istanbul went through a complete roster rebuild this summer and so far it's paying dividends. They are standing alone at the top of the Euroleague with 5 wins out of 5 so it is time to look more in depth at their success. My name is Augustas and in this video we are going to look at how Dimitris Itoudis transformed Fener. Fenerbahce appearing more energetic through this period of the third quarter as Devin Booker gets the shooter's roll. Before diving into the footage and the tactics, let's look at some statistical context. The Turkish side has the best net rating, which is based on the best defense in the Euroleague and third best offense. There are a few significant differences compared to last year. Defensively, Fener are allowing way less three point attempts and much more twos. Because of that, opponents have the lowest true shooting percentage against Fenerbahce. Offensively, they have cut down on turnovers, Nick Kalaitis effect, while keeping the assist numbers high. They also up the three point attempt rate and the conversion, which stands at an excellent 41% at the moment. Down to the final six, Wolbecken, past his man, back out, got a rich, wide open, bang! Now, let's try to dissect what led to these changes. Etudis' impact is felt strongly over the first five games. Starting from the defensive side, Fenerbahce always apply full court man to man pressure to the point guard. They want to play the slow game as they allow the third least possessions overall. You will see Nick Kalaris or others stopping the ball from advancing quickly by meeting it high up the court. Before, you might see an occasional denying from receiving it easily and then constant pressure even after made baskets. Fenerbahce is forcing you to attack in half court where they feel extremely confident and have implemented a set of rules to have the most efficient defense as of yet. The first one is with a passive big man where you won't see Jonathan Motley lifting higher than the screener. He is acting as a rim and paint protector with the guard responsible to contest the shot from behind. Note that everyone else is staying home, meaning it is a two man job to defend this pick. No kickouts are allowed, so no easy catch and shoot opportunities are created. Doesn't get the shooter's roll. Yes, a good screen, as we see here, might create an open shot from free or mid range. But that's the risk Etudis is willing to take. Midrange is the shot they are forcing and if some of them go in, let it be. It is important to prevent layups and spot a freeze. Against streaky shooters from behind the arc like Brown or Baldwin expect a different game plan. Occasionally Fener will go under on successive screens inviting them to shoot, again not allowing to create by getting into the paint and collapsing help defenders. Watch Kaladis here staying home and then being able to close out hard to Bonzi Carlson, forcing him to put the ball on the floor and then turn it over. The second main choice is switch all. There are a bunch of details to like this idea from Etudis. Fenner has the right players to use this scheme. Devin Booker and Motley are solid on the perimeter, able to stay in front more than they are not. Wilbekin is active fronting the post, making the opponents work to receive the ball not comfortably or further away from the basket. Look at him here, he forces Carlson to catch it outside of the paint first, then stands his ground and on the second catch Bonzi has only 5 seconds to operate. Double comes, Maccabi spacing is off and he is trained into taking this contested jumper. Low post, missed everything. Marco Guderich with the rebound. Also you will often see Marco Guderich or Nigel Hayes Davis guarding the ball handler, so when they switch they are strong and tall enough to defend the post player even without the help. Here Nigel is marking Misic from the start, later switches on to Zizic and then on Clyburn. Some other elite coaches are using this tactic to diminish the size of a mismatch on the block. Ettore Messina likes to put Siobhan Shields on guards, while Sharuna Sesikavic sometimes uses Kalinic for the same purposes. To sum up Fenner's defense, let's watch this clip from a great angle. We have a full court pressure combined with switching or passive pick and roll coverages, where the two men defending are responsible for stopping it. Everyone else is close to their defenders, so Fenerbahce can limit three pointers and force tougher and less efficient two point shots. Beautiful ball movement stretches the visiting team's defense. Tough catch by Achille Polinari, drives, he's lost the basketball. Tibor Plyce gets a hook away, it's too long. Now that's a shot clock violation, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. It's time for a quick message from the sponsor of this video. Submarines have arrived in the high seas of World of Warships. German and American Tier 6 and 8 submarines have arrived in early access. Stay sharp, the hunt is on. Now, let's get back to talking about Fenerbahce. 
If defensively this team looks to be destined for success all season long, I still have some questions surrounding their play on the other side of the court. Yes, they do have few clear weapons, such as early post-up mismatches. Hayes Davis, Dyson Pierre or even Goodrich are tall for their positions and Etudis is emphasizing their catches near the rim early in the shot clock. It allows Fenner to score some easy baskets or test the opponent's rotations and create the spot-up attempts they are limiting to their enemies. Having Kaleidis also helps in this category. He is so great at recognizing mismatches early. She passed quick towards Motley who puts it in with the foul on Claver. Look at him here scanning the court all the time then pointing to Hayes Davis to go to the post since he has Wade Baldwin on him. As soon as he starts cutting, the Greek playmaker sees there is no help coming and has all the space for this lob pass over Baldwin's head. Nick looks refreshed in a new environment after a tough end to his stint in Barcelona. Mike James' podcast, I believe it was in the Basket News, he was talking about you, your decision to come here. And he said, uh, you know, you will be much freer here. 100% as a player. Uh you know, you want to be, you want to have uh, some freedom, uh, yeah. especially, you know, I'm not 20 years old uh, and know how to play. Besides the spectacular shooting so far, that should regress to the mean as the season passes, he has found a solid chemistry with Fenerbahce's frontcourt. John Motley is a perfect pick and roll companion with great hands and touch around the rim, while Devin Booker has shined as a pick and pop threat in the Istanbul Derby, with Kaladis finding him with this spectacular behind the head pass. But the biggest star of this team is none other than Scotty Wilbekin. Steadily improving his scoring total in the first five games, the American guard has shown improved decision making together with his magical burst of speed and dribble. Since trailing by 13, Kaleta's back door goes Wilbekin, confronted midair, and he's still got it. Under coach Etudis, he does most of his damage in two situations. First being the diamond entry set and Scotty running off screens with multiple variations to end the play. And the second one, late shot clock situations with possessions being stuck. Wilbekin has been stunning in these, but that's also why I want to see more to decide about Fenerbahce's offense. Against Anadolu and Maccabi, he created space with his burst of speed against Polonara and others, finishing with jump stops and floaters in the paint or high arcing freeze from behind the line. One thing is clear. While they force twos from the opponents, they emphasize long shots for themselves when the shot clock is about to expire. Marco Guderich also saved the day a couple of times against Efes, with hard to repeat every game shots and that's why we should wait more before deciding about Fenner's offense. However, if there is someone who can change it for the better, it's Carson Edwards. The rookie guard has been getting inconsistent minutes so far and that's normal. Carson has to adjust to the European game, especially on defense, and to understand fully all the things Etudis wants from him. And Edwards with a mobility edge over Todd Keen takes him to the rack, goes to the left and gets it to go! Despite limited minutes and often having to play after long stretches on the bench, we see the scoring potential from Edwards. He is ready to hit shots even after 30 minutes straight on the bench and can score bunches in a hurry. He struggles in the paint amongst trees but is lethal from the mid-range and outside the arc as he showed in the Istanbul Derby with 7 points straight in the third quarter. Shortest athlete on the floor. 1.8 meters tall. <laughs> My goodness. It is early but the sky seems to be looking bright for Fenerbahce again. After a year of missing the playoffs, Dimitris Etudis' reign has started with a bang while his influence on their playing style is clear. But will their defense sustain such high level throughout the season? Can their offense improve or was the hot start a fluke? Share your opinions in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like this video and I'll see you in the next one.